Hi, welcome to Stearns. Today I'd like to take this opportunity to show you the proper procedure for resetting the lever arm in your Stearns 87000 series self-adjusting brake. If the caution warning was missed and the support plate mounting bolts were removed prior to securing the plunger as instructed in the warning, or if a new disc pack was installed to replace a worn disc pack, it is likely that the lever arm has sprung from its factory set position and now needs to be reset. The rack and pinion operate on the last two sector gear, rack, teeth, with a new unworn disc pack. There should be one quarter of an inch distance between the surface of the support plate and the inside of the gooseneck of the lever arm. The gooseneck of the lever arm should be parallel with the surface of the support plate. The solenoid air gap should be 13th 16th to 15 16 of an inch. Before disassembly, depress and secure the solenoid plunger to the solenoid frame with a cable tie. Once the solenoid plunger has been secured to the solenoid frame, using a 7 16 inch nut driver, remove the three support plate mounting screws. Firmly grab hold of the support plate with one hand at the 3 o'clock and one hand at the 9 o'clock position. Press the sector gear end of the lever arm against a wood block or a corner of a bench to position lever arm back to its proper seated position. Assure that there is one quarter inch of distance between the surface of the support plate and the inside of the gooseneck of the lever arm. Mount support plate assembly using a 7 and 16 inch nut driver. Tighten mounting screws to 75 to 78 pounds per inch. Using a cutting tool, cut the wire tie. Check the solenoid air gap. It should be between 13 16 and 15 16 of an inch. If air gap is not between 13 16 and 15 16, then refer to resetting the solenoid air gap. Insert the blade of a flathead screwdriver between the lever arm sector gear and the machined ledge of the lever arm sector gear area. Note, if this section of the lever cannot easily be accessed, do not use method number 2 and refer to either method 1 or method 3. Once the blade of the flathead screwdriver has been securely placed into this position, pry the lever arm back into its proper seated position. Assure that there is one quarter inch of distance between the surface of the support plate and the inside of the gooseneck of the lever arm. Check the solenoid air gap. It should be between 13 16 and 15 16 of an inch. If the air gap is not between 13 16 and 15 16 of an inch, then refer to the resetting the solenoid air gap. Securely fit the end of the 3 16 heck drive wrench Allen wrench into the 3 16 inch drive head of the pressure spring cap screw. Apply firm steady pressure in a counterclockwise position to break the Loctite bond between the screw and the spring tube. You will feel and hear the distinct breaking of the bond. Then proceed to rotate the pressure spring screw until pressure is removed from the pressure spring. Once pressure is removed from the pressure spring, very carefully and gently take hold of the gooseneck of the lever arm and carefully and gently pull the lever arm until the lever arm has reached its proper seated position. Be careful not to pull too far as to pull the sector gear all the way off the pinion gear. This proper position can be confirmed by measuring the quarter inch clearance between the surface of the support plate and the inside of the gooseneck or by confirming that the two end teeth of the sector gear are engaged with the pinion gear. With no spring pressure applied to the lever arm, the position must be secured until the pressure spring has been retightened. Securely fit the end of the 3 16 heck drive wrench, Allen wrench, into the 3 16 drive head of the pressure spring cap screw. Apply steady firm pressure, Proceed to tighten pressure spring by turning the tensioning screws clockwise until you feel the tension screw washer make contact with the spring tube, located at the center of the pressure spring. You will feel a distinct stop. Be careful not to over-tighten, which could damage the tensioning screw. 
you should have noticed that the solenoid air gap dropped to zero when once the pressure spring tension was removed, as you are tightening the pressure spring, you should see the air gap reposition itself. If this does not occur, firmly grab hold of the plunger, pull it out of the coil, push it back until the plunger makes contact with the solenoid frame, and then let go of the plunger to allow it to snap back to its spring-loaded position. Check the solenoid air gap. It should be 13 16th to 15 16th of an inch. If air gap is not between 13 16th and 15 16th of an inch, then refer to resetting the solenoid air gap. Thank you for watching.